in your ear and tell her I and Ursula walk in the orchard and our whole discourse is all of her. Sayyidatah <laughs> overheard them and made her steal to the preached power. There was she hide her to listen to our purpose. This is my often. Fare thee well and leave us alone. I will make her come. I warned you presently. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ursula, the maid must not come as we do trace this alley up and down. Our talk must only be of Benedict. <laughs> and I can make it. Let me thy heart to praise him more than man ever did merit. <laughs> my talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. This matter is to his crafty air maid, which only moves by hearsay. <laughs> okay, so the for Beatrice, like a lapwing, runs close to the ground to hear a conference. <laughs> but oh, you sure that Benedict is not the Beatrice? <laughs> oh, entirely. So says the prince in my new troth, Lord. Did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did bid me to entreat her to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them that if they loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with his passion and never let Beatrice know of it. Oh, why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve his full as fortunate a bed as ever Beatrice shall couch upon? Oh, God of love! I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded to man, but nature never framed the woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, and surprising what they look on. And her wit values itself so highly that to her all matters else seem false. She cannot love nor take no shape nor project of affection. She is so self-endeared. So oh, sure. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, certainly it were not good she knew his love, lest she make sport in it. Well, you speak the truth. I never yet saw a man how wise, noble, yet how rarely featured. But she would spell him backwards. <laughs> As Beatrice is, cannot be commendable. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would have laughed me into the air, or mocked me out of myself, pressed me to death with wit. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in sighs, wasting worthy. For better death than die with mocks, which is as bad as I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> tell her of it. Hear what she will say. No, rather. I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passions, and truly I'll devise some honest slander to stain my cousin with. One doth not know how much an ill word may empoison liking. Do not do your cousin such a wrong. Beatrice cannot be so much without true judgment. Having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have is to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is the only man of Italy. Always accepted. My dear Claudia. <laughs> when are you married, madam? Like every day. Tomorrow. <laughs> Come, go in. I'll show you some tire and have thy counsel, which is best to furnish me in tomorrow. <laughs> oh, she is lying. I warn you, can't cut her mouth. If it proves so, then nothing goes by half. Some keep it still with arrows, some with traps. <laughs> My ears. Can this be true? <laughs> Stand I condemn for pride and scorn so much 